Hello, everyone, and welcome to some Mr. FPGA news. This week, we will be talking about the Neo Geo Pocket Color, the Amiga Core getting a new CPU mode, new mappers added, and existing mappers fixed to the NES Core, the CDI Core booting some games, and more. Also, check out my channel sponsor, Mr. Add-ons, a place where you can get all your Mr. Needs, things like full Mr. Setups, accessories, IO boards, and more. Now let's get to the news. There's a lot of testing I do for my videos and other retro related items that I may never get the chance to talk to you about. So I decided to open a separate YouTube channel where I film some of this. I'm calling the channel Lose Retro Extras. It will host more casual videos where I do these tests and have some short extra content from my main channel's videos. Since these videos will be more casual, I'll be doing very minimal editing, but there might be some stuff that may interest to you. So consider subscribing. The first video I posted there involved me setting up a 4x3 TFT panel that I was able to save from e-waste from my workplace. I set up the Mr. FPGA in it and do some lag tests. Also, the videos on this channel will first appear on my Patreon page, so consider subscribing there if you want to see these videos when they are first available. There are fixes for the Neo Geo Pocket Color Core that improve compatibility. These fixes are going to be implemented for a future update. On the post, we are hinted on the following games being affected. Fatal Fury First Contact, Memories Off Pure, Then Shall They Go 2, and Ganbare Neo Pokekun. The Amiga Core has a new CPU mode that lets you select a 68,010 CPU. This CPU was a minor revision to the standard 68,000 that also included some fixes and new features. One feature was rudimentary memory virtualization, which is useful for users of WHD Load, an Amiga OS friendly hard disk install package. Another feature was a loop mode that was basically a CPU cache for certain code that ran in a loop. This can give a nice speed bump in certain games. You can see a big difference in the game Xenon when a lot of sprites appear on screen. However, depending on the software you use, this new CPU option will have some compatibility issues. The NES core was updated with the following changes. Mappers 205 and 208 were added. Mapper 205 is a helper chip that was mostly used on multi-cards. Mapper 208 was only used in the unlicensed Street Fighter 4 game. The game might have Street Fighter in the name, but this is nowhere near a Street Fighter game. There were also fixes and improvements in Mappers 210, the MMC5 mapper, and the NES event mapper. Mapper 210 was a Namco mapper used in games like Splatterhouse, Dream Master, Family Circuit 91, and others. The MMC5 mapper was used in the US version of Castlevania 3, Uncharted Waters, and more. And the NES event mapper was an MMC1 baseboard used for Nintendo World Championships. This was a multi-card that had timed versions of Super Mario Bros., Rad Racer, and Tetris. The core update also included Famicom disk system fixes, and all these updates were done by Paul Bianel. Since the Mr. Pi does not come with its own power supply, issues regarding power may be more common on these systems. On Reddit, someone was discussing some SD card issues that were occurring with them with the Mr. Pi. Other users in the thread were saying they had similar issues. What resolved these SD card issues was a different power supply, so it's important to use a proper power supply with your Mr. Pi setup. Retro Remake does have a guide on their site on how to find proper power supplies and shows two examples of compatible power supplies that come with other devices. There are no direct links to these example power supplies, so you will have to find them on your own. If you want other recommendations for power supply, other users on the Reddit thread are mentioning the power supplies they are using with good results. The in-development CDI core can now boot some games. The core is still in very early development with some games playable to a certain degree and sound is not working. If you want to try out the core yourself, you do need an unstable build of the main Mr. Binary in addition to the CDI core. You can get the details on the Mr. FPGA Discord CDI channel. Thanks to Ratboy, the Sega Saturn core will be getting mouse support, but you can test it out now if you download an unstable build of the core. You can either use a USB mouse or you can use the joystick mouse option. There are a lot of games that support the mouse, and you can get a full list of those games on SegaRetro.com. There are other compatibility changes in this unstable build of the Saturn Core, and you can see the games affected on the Retro RGB post by Thanthrax. Martin Donlin, who has developed the RM M92 
M72, and other cores, recently put out a couple of videos going over his process of reverse engineering arcade boards. To help with this, he created a way of emulating 8-bit ROMs using an RP2040 microcontroller. He calls it Pico ROM, and it lets him more rapidly iterate while experimenting with arcade hardware. Check out the video if you love learning about technical info. This past Saturday, Retro Frog started selling cases for Retro Remake's Mr. Pie. They cost $30 and are available in three colors. Mr. FPGA UK is also selling a case for the Mr. Pie. Their version is a clear acrylic case that costs 23 pounds and is available in six colors. And also, Ultimate Mr. announced their upcoming case for the Mr. Pie. It will cost 25 pounds and will be offered with optional extras and upgrades and will have two color options. As more and more people have been using the new wave of DE10 Nano clones, like the Mr. Pi and QM Tech boards, some have been noticing issues with the Nintendo 64 core. Fortunately, Robert, the N64 core developer, has a fix for these issues and made a test build available. The issue is pretty technical, and here's how Robert explains it. When reading data from SDRAM, you need to decide when to look at the data. As it is changing with the SDRAM clock speed, the data will not be stable all the time, but only for some time. There is a time when it begins to get stable, a stable time, and a time where it gets unstable again. Previously, we sampled right at the border, and on some new boards, it will even shift in the unstable area with that. The test build shifts the sample point. Not yet clear if really in the middle of the eye, but probably enough to fix it already. So in short, Robert made the Nintendo 64 core look at SD RAM data at a time that will be compatible with the DE10 Nano and the clone boards. As of now, it looks like only the Nintendo 64 core is affected by this issue. So that's it for this episode. Please also try to support Sorge, the maintainer of the Mr. Project, and other Mr. Developers and contributors on support platforms such as Patreon and Ko-fi. Their hard work allows us to enjoy this amazing project. I also provide a link to all my sources in the description. Make sure to also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in blog form and to get more retro-related content. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, and if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.